DC. You gotta take that ass to the Sunny Bones. You can't have Aquafina. Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, just both of you guys thoughts on the first day. First, uh, first day was well. Um, it was hot, like like we expected. Um, we practiced our butts off, though. Uh, I think personally, we had a good. I, I think personally, we had a, a good first day. Um, our line did pretty well. Defense line did pretty well. Linebackers did pretty well. But we're only going to build on here. There's not a whole lot of newcomers. I mean, did it feel like you guys just kind of picked up where you left off, and or, or how did you guys feel about it? Yes, that's one thing. Um, coming back this this um, fall camp is we felt like we just kind of continued the the process. We wasn't like we restarted anything. Um, left off where we um, or started where we left off. I'm just really excited with all the young guys coming in. Felt like everyone just kind of jumped in. Uh, we started going ones and twos on one field, and just so kind of getting that, um, you know, that rotation started early and uh, get those guys in. Both of you, how much do you feel like this first practice is about setting expectations for the rest of the camp? I think I think it does. I think I think you do have to set expectations, but I think it's also first day. I think you need to get all like the, you know, the stuff out of the way for, for the first day so you can build on having good stack and good days throughout the rest of camp. Yeah, I mean, it's important for us to set the standard, especially for the younger guys um, coming in, showing them that, yeah, when you get tired, it is hot. They got to push through that. Everyone in the country is dealing with it. And so we just got to continue to push. And uh, whenever we do get tired, um, continue to lean on our teammates, encourage them, and make sure that we're, uh, we're building off of each other. You guys are both involved in where Arkansas football was to where it is. What what does it take to go to another level? You know, where, where do you where do y'all have to improve to to go beyond nine and four? Yeah, I mean, um, the there's always building blocks to get to those you know ten wins, eleven wins, twelve wins, and I think that it starts in the off season. Um, I think there's a a certain level of work that you have to do early on um, in the year to get you into the uh, of the point where you can get to those ten wins. But I think that uh, we have such a good group and we know what it takes to get to nine. And there's a lot of things that we could have cleaned up from last year. So this fall camp, it's really looking back from last season. What did we need to work on? Um, continue, continuing to fix those mistakes, but also um, grow as a team and just continue to get closer. I would say, uh, I mean, we take success last year, obviously, we went nine and four. So we know what it takes to get there. I think doing little things better will take us above that nine and four um, barrier right there. Just keep working on the little things. Ricky, when we were watching you, uh, uh, Coach Kennedy was putting a lot of emphasis on second step. From your perspective, can you kind of analyze that for us? And then Sam was in here talking about, he said Cody Kennedy is, is a better teaching coach than he is. What have been your thoughts of working with him for the last year or so? Yeah, so the second step thing, he's talking about a down shoulder. Uh, he's, he's, he was telling me my, my feet were going, my second step was going backwards when it should go up the field. So he was correcting me on that. Um, coach Kennedy's awesome. Um, he's a players coach. We love him. We can talk to him whenever we want. Um, he just he just does a great job out there. I mean, having a coach you can talk to, and it's not just a you know coaches players relations. It, it feels like a good relationship. It just it's awesome. So, yeah, I guess just for both of you guys, what do y'all think of Isaiah Nichols' prospects in the in the middle of the D line and just being a guy who can lead and, and be productive? Yeah, <clears throat> Isaiah uh, kind of took a leadership role early on in our workouts. Um, throughout the spring and the summer. So kind of seeing his development, because I came in with Isaiah. And so just him and I being able to grow together, um, seeing his leadership has been unbelievable. But then on the field, you know, we know that we need guys to step up on our D-line. And I think he's very capable of it. He's had a great um, spring camp whenever um, in the spring, great summer workouts and uh, the start to fall camp. I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, I think Isaiah stepped up as a big leader this year. Um, he's one of the most like vocal guys on the team. So uh, that aspect, he's stepped up a lot. Um, he works hard. He's a great teammate, too. He's going to keep getting better and better. You guys are kind of in opposite situations. You Linebackers, the experienced ones are gone from last year, except you, Bumper. But you've got really pretty good numbers there with Drew and the younger guys. Mm -hmm. And then with you, you lost Myron Cunningham, but everybody else is back and been pretty much the same unit for a couple of years. Yeah. Can you guys just talk about the maybe the left tackle and just – the younger guys like Crawford, you said Manuel did well today. Can you just talk about how the other linebackers come along, Bumper? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we did lose a lot of um, experience, but we also gained, um, you know, Drew Sanders uh, from Alabama. He's very talented today. He showed it again, just kind of can run, spread the field, runs very well, physical. Um, Jordan Crook had a really good day. Um, you know, he's a young guy, wants to learn, wants to get better. And, you know, Jackson Woodard has had his, the strides he's taken is unbelievable. So I'm just I'm very excited for everyone to see this group because yes it is different and not as experienced but it's a very talented unit. 
I would say for the O-line, I mean, we're so close. We, I mean, we started back with the Morris era. We had, uh, I mean, Dalton was there. Luke came in, Bo, Brady, me. So, I mean, it's been pre- we've been pretty close for a while now. So, we're going to keep building on that. Devin Manuel is doing really well. Um, he's really athletic for his size, for how big he is. He's super athletic. He's going to only continue to get better and better. So, he's going to be a great player. For both you guys, you know, obviously the, the transfer portal, you got players going all over the place. But in the SEC, you're really seeing a lot of guys move within – the conference, sometimes within the division, you guys have added guys, you have <clears> lost guys. Well, as players, what, what do y'all think about guys, so much movement within the conference and you're playing guys who used to be your teammates and you got guys you used to play against? I think it's just a personal reason. Um, I don't think much about it. I think <clears throat> they're going to make the best decisions for them and their family. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah, this, this league is so competitive. And whenever you have a guy that's, you know, there's a certain level of talent that's in our conference. And so you want guys from inside the conference because you know that's what the talent level where it's at so getting additions from inside the conference you know we, we welcome it um the guys come in they're ready to work um and the thing is, is people that leave to other schools you know we wish them the best like we we know that how talented they are and they deserve to be in this conference in this side of the conference and just hope you know, wish them the best but ultimately like there's a certain talent level so you know getting guys within the conference is important both of you guys i was talking oh man it's been Kendall Browse, and he's been a coordinator for like seven or eight years. He's never had a returning starter at quarterback. You guys, this is your fifth year coming mm-hmm. up the fourth. You guys have never played with a returning starter at quarterback. Yeah. Has that changed things, the way practices go and stuff, not having to, I guess, get a new guy acclimated or no, not yeah. uh, you know, knowing, knowing what he does well and all that stuff? I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, KJ, excuse me. <clears throat> KJ was here last year as a great quarterback and he's super confident. I mean, having him behind me, like I'm super confident and just knowing that he's coming back and he's going to build on his leadership and the way he plays is just, it's unbelievable to have that behind me. Yeah. Confidence is crazy. And on like the defensive side of the ball is, you know, we know what we're going to get. Um, whenever, you know, you have a quarterback like KJ style, um, he's going to make, you know, drives last longer. Um, and that's important just in the game. You know, time of possession is like very important in our league. And, you know, KJ does a very good job of managing the offense, managing time. Um, you know, he's going to put the ball in the right um, spots, get the first down when we need it. So very excited to have him back. And just in addition to that, um, you know, with you being a center and you being a linebacker, you guys are right at the middle. Jalen's right at the middle, middle safety. And you guys are all leaders and veteran players. How important is that to have, that like guys that kind of see the field and everything and you know can correct things and guys that are returning players i think it's pretty important um and we're all old too so i think that's pretty important um we also have guys we also have leaders like dalton wagner um we have a uh, brady latham you know bill Lambert, those guys are leaders There's a bunch of other leaders on the defense too so there's more leaders than just us i would say i would say this team is rising with leaders and like being able to, you know, we know where like this game starts, it starts in the trenches and be able to have older guys in the middle and work your way out is important. Um, you know, every single position group, I feel like we have, um, like Ricky said, leaders to, you know, take those groups and continue to show them the way. And so we just continue to get guys um, on that board, on that same page. Um, it's, there's you know a lot of upside to it. Ricky, uh, Rocket's gotten a lot of work with the ones since spring and, and camp now. Um, what do you think of his game, where, where he's good? And then, could you speak to the depth at Tailback? Yeah, um, Rocket's a phenomenal player. Uh, he's one of the most, uh, I don't know, sculpted backs I've seen. He's huge. Um, he can run the ball. He can run run down your throat. Um, he's fast, too. Um, I can see – I just see a lot of upside with him and potential. And then uh, what's your second question? I'm sorry. Just the depth at Tailback, like the way you guys – especially <laughs> when uh, I think depth this year is going to – I think so far I think it's been Rocket. Um, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't remember because it was the first day today, but i seen Rocket back there. And um, I can't remember the other one. I'm sorry. Well, AJ. Oh, yeah. AJ, yeah, AJ and them. I'm sure they're all rotating back there. But. Great start, kind of clicking on all cylinders. Do you, you feel that way just for both of you? Do you feel like fall camp started out that way also? Uh, I mean, we did some really good things. Starting off, I mean, but uh, just being out in the heat, I mean, just, just, just that factor and just being fatigued and stuff like that. So just being able to come out and just 
gain mental toughness or just <clears throat> overcoming just the heat and stuff like that, different variables of the game. So just being able to just overcome that adversity that we was put through today. But I mean, I feel like we came out, had a great uh, energetic day. I mean, we flew around, had fun and competed. Throw with uh, Landers or Satagna. Um, what, what did you think of, of what have you thought of those guys? Obviously, you've seen them all summer. So. I, did, I did not throw with uh, Satagna today, uh, but I did throw with Matt today. He, uh, he uh, bounced in with the one and stuff today. So, I mean, just having a guy like Matt and just the speed and versatility that he bring on the outside, I mean, he just, I mean, he's just very athletic. I mean, just being able to have a guy like that that I can trust and uh, make sure I get the ball in space and just let him make plays. So, I mean, just bring him onto the team. I mean, just a huge asset. So, uh, really explosive. Uh, just coming off the ball. I mean, I threw uh, one on ones with him. So just being able to watch him come off the ball is. I mean, he's very explosive. And also, he's a young kid. So I mean, he's still learning the game and trying to slow the game down for himself. So I mean, but starting off, I mean, great. KJ, uh, asking a question for Nate. He, you want to know how, how much influence did Felipe have on you in the year that you played? You know, with him and played behind him, and then came in the Missouri game, obviously, and had a great game. How much influence did he have on your career? And, Oh, uh, I mean, Felipe, I mean, I looked up, I always looked up to Felipe as a bigger brother. I mean, when he was here, I mean, I just made sure I modeled myself out to him. And also just being able to be a sponge. I mean, just being able to just know that he's played in this league for a little while. I mean, he know what it takes to win. He's won big games. So being able to just watch the little details that he do and just try to critique his details and try to add them to my bag. So just being able to have a guy like that to come in and just – and just humble as he is and just genuine as he is, just to be able to be able to help you and just help you understand the game, help you slow the game down and just give you different viewpoints of how things are being viewed in the SEC. So just being able to have a guy like this is truly amazing. It's just honor. Jalen, how about the safeties? I, you've got Brini, you've got Jaden Johnson, several guys that have played, Simeon Blair. How are the other safeties doing back there and fitting in with the group? It seems like you got a little depth back there. Yeah, we got a lot of depth back there, I'll say. Um, Young guys are catching on fast, and that's because I think they're coming in with like a sponge. They're soaking in all the information. They're always asking questions. I mean, I mean, we get in the meeting room. I mean, I feel like we get we ask more questions than we watch like, clips because every single clip we have, people are asking questions, engage, want to know what's going on, always going in the film, want to get extra time in, and that's what it takes. So, um, no, young guys stepping up well, and leaders are leading. So, like me, uh, me, Sam. Um, Brini's coming in and even asking questions, but at the same time, leading on his part. Dwight is kind of stepping up too with the corners, and Hudson Clark stepped up too, made some really great plays today, and it's also kind of leading a little bit. I mean, they're, the whole DB room is honestly is doing a really great job of just engaging with uh, the plan that we have for the uh, secondary, and it's going to continue to grow. Has lost a lot of starters, but really the defense is filled in with some guys from other schools. Speaking of SEC schools, you got some LSU, Alabama, Georgia players, but and also some players who've been here and played for a while that are taking another step. You feel pretty good about the not just the starting lineup, but the depth as a unit, not just safety. Oh, as a unit for the whole defense, yes. I mean, we have leaders at every single spot. I mean, in the middle, I mean, it starts with Zay. Zay's been leading really well. And I I mentioned Tarin Carter, who's out, but he's been leading as well. I mean, also just helping young guys out and the new transfers that come in with the scheme and the, um, the stuff up front. And then, you, of course, you have just talked to Bumper. He, he's the general there. But then Drew Sanders coming in, stepping in, more of a quiet guy, but we'll speak when he has to for sure. Jordan Crook is coming in, stepping up as well. Uh, Pooh Paul is also doing, I mean, and in the back end, like I said, um, Simeon Blair has been doing a great job of leading. I mean, being a, um, a vocal guy and stepping up as well. And, I mean, like I said, there's a bunch of guys I can name on defense. But, I mean, defense overall, I mean, I think every spot what makes us so, like, great right now is that everybody's leading. If I could ask you all both, you went one nine games. What does it take to get to the next level? Where, where do you all have to be better? Where can you improve? If you all could both do that one. Well, I say for us, uh, just from a team and an offense standpoint, I'm going to start offense first, just being consistent. I mean, as an offense, I mean, high power offense, tempo, spread tempo offense. Main thing in this league, I mean, you have to be consistent and stay ahead of the chain. I mean, you can't take too many negatives in this league. I mean, we all know. So just being able to be consistent, stay ahead of the chains. And then as a team, just doing a little details right. And just main thing is just as we get tired and uh, adversity starts to sit in, look to one another and just encourage one another and just bring each other up. I mean, that's going to get us through the tough times. So. And for me, I say it, it's not really – it's not riding on last year. I mean, we put last year behind us. I mean, last year was a great year. We had a lot of great success and, you know, brought the pride back and brought the excitement back. But, like I said, 2022 is a new year. I mean, so records don't matter. And when you start September 30, you're 0-0. Zero zero. You're not 9-4. and four. So, I mean, you got to have that approach going in. That's the approach we have in going to fall camp. We're not worried about what we did last year. We're worried about our first game and just getting better every day as a group. So, when that first game comes, we'll be prepared. 
Okay, do you, what do you think of Rocket's skill set with the ones, what he's looked like with the ones, and then overall depth at tailback? Uh, just confident. I mean, he just came in. I mean, he soaked it all in as a sponge. I mean, he's asked questions, asked me questions about the offense and different play calls and why we're calling these plays. So, I mean, he's really – really in tune to what we're doing on the offense side of the ball. And I mean, and just from a running back depth standpoint, I mean, all those guys can be able to be that guy. I mean, just this talent and the, just the skill set that those guys bring to the table, just huge advantage for them. I mean, it causes a lot of chaos on the defense. I mean, all of them can catch out the backfield. All of them has great routes, stick routes. Um, they also can just home run hitters as well. So, I mean, just having a running back and a running back room like we have, I mean, it's truly uh, an advantage. KJ, uh, Coach Pittman said that Malik probably took about 15 to 20 wide receiver snaps today. Was he working with the first team, the second team? And and, and what's your analysis of, of how he looks at that position? Uh, Malik is getting, I mean, he's getting confident and comfortable uh, each and every day. Uh, in the main room, he's asking a lot of questions uh, as well. And also, I mean, just, I mean, he did, he bounced around first team and then he also took uh, second team quarterback reps as well. So he's doing both right now. Uh, but the main thing is just being able to just keep him confident. I mean, just keep him confident in himself. And as a team and teammates, I mean, we are also just confident in him going out there and just being himself. I mean, he don't have to do too much, just be out, go out there, have fun and be himself. You imagine having 20 more snaps on top of no, I'm actually I'm, I'm, I'm actually not tired. My feet hurt though. That's about it though. But I'm actually not tired. Hey, KJ, um wonder if you can expand a little bit on Matt Landers' game, what you like about him, what he brings to the table. And then we saw Jaden Wilson catch a deep ball, I think, from Malik today. Just what kind of a weapon can can those two guys be? Uh, Jaden's coming along. I mean, just from coming in, I mean, he also had a good spring. I mean, he had some ups and downs, but I mean, just being able to just keep a level head and just coming in first day and just establishing his, just his confidence level, just risen through the roof. I mean, he's on the rise. Uh, he's also one of those guys that stand out there uh, catching jug machines and I mean, he just want to be great. So just having a guy like that, that's young as he is, and just also had a will and desire to want to be great. I mean, that's a, a good team, a, a guy that you would like to have on your team and also a guy that you would like to throw to. And then just also Matt Landers, I mean, just coming in, I mean, he's played ball uh, quite a while now. So, I mean, he knows what it takes. Uh, he knows the work and the small details it takes to get to that next level. And then also just being able to have a skill set like him, he can stretch the ball, stretch the field vertically uh, with his speed and just his ability to track the ball down the field. And also he has also crisp routes too. So he can create separation as well. Atlanta, you said you had lost weight. First practice last year, you said you needed to lose some. Where are you right now versus where you were a year ago? And and, and what is your current weight? Uh, I'm 240 right now. So, I mean, that was my weight I wanted to come in at for fall camp, 240. So, hoping uh, this fall camp, I mean, I shed uh, a couple more pounds before the first game. So, I mean, that's my mindset going into it. So, each and every day I'm attacking it and just living it up. Than you did on the first day last year? I do, I do. I mean, I'm flying around a lot better. I'm a lot confident in myself, uh, just being able to get out and make plays with my legs and stuff like that. So just being able to just knock some of the extra weight off and just lean up a little bit and just be able to just come out there and just put my team in the best position to win. Yeah, I wanted to ask both y'all about Trey Knox, maybe uh, obviously from a defensive standpoint, how do you see Trey progressing at tight end? And then after you answer that, I mean, KJ, just what, what's your take on on Trey, you know, how he's trans been transitioned out. It's obviously been a while now. Uh, yeah, Trey Knox, um, they, you know, of course, everybody knows now he's tied in now. And he took it, I mean, he I mean, he took it head on. He said, okay, I'm going to attack it. So, I mean, he gained a lot of great weight. I um, put on a lot of muscle. I mean, I mean, he went from like 205 to like, what, 240, 50 or something like that. And, and like most of his muscle. So, and we, you can tell he's moving well. And he just, you can tell he's just comfortable now. And he's comfortable in the system. So, I can see us. I mean, I can expect a lot of great things from him in our offense and using him a lot because, like I said, he's a weapon. He's a matchup problem uh, when he knows uh, when he's kind of got more acclimated to it. But, I mean, he's moving fluently, and I mean, I'm proud of him for making that transition and doing it with, you know, keeping level head and doing it for the best of the team. Uh, just like what Jalen said, I mean, Jeff, I mean, he's just confident. He came in, attacked it. Uh, once we uh, told him that he was going to be tight end, I mean, but Trey just come with a different skill set at the tight end position. I mean, he, I don't call him a tight end necessarily. I call him like a flex tight end because we still can put Trey out there, uh, Trey out there, uh, right receiver and just let him play. I mean, because, I mean, that's his background. So being able to have a guy like that to have a receiver background and know what it takes to create separation and get off uh, routes. And then also just be able to just have mismatch problem. I mean, he created a lot of uh, mismatch problem. Linebackers can cover him. I mean, but still just from a receiver uh, background, I mean, he still can just get off linebackers and run by linebackers and stuff like this. So just be able to have a guy like Trey just a truly asset. Okay, last year in the two-minute drill, seemed like you, speaking of Trey, seemed like you really looked at Trey quite a bit. Talk about the confidence factor you had 
in him in that two minute uh, the game, but the two minute drill particularly. Uh, just having a guy like I mean, just relying on Trey. I mean, just is it's truly just uh just confidence. I mean, I know he's gonna be in the right spot at the right time. I know he's gonna run his route. I know I, it's just chemistry. I mean, just being able to have chemistry in those current situations, knowing that I can turn and get the ball to Trey, and he's gonna be in the right spot. Yeah, uh, just the general day one. What you thought of uh, pushing through the heat, and what, what you thought of the day, and then Hudson Clark got y'all off the field in two minutes. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it was a great first day. I mean, I think we did a lot of good things and we had some things we got to clean up for sure. But that's part of being day one. I mean, each day you're supposed to progress and get better. So we expected to have mistakes. And that's why we have coaches that come in the next day, watch the film and we'll come in as a, gr a group and fix them. And that play he made, I mean, uh, Hudson broke on the ball. I mean, it was a great play. I mean, if I was a quarterback, you know, I would have thought that um the, the the route was open but he come in he came in broke on it made a great play and then he fell down in two minutes like he was supposed to so I mean it was a great play and you know like I, said, I, was, I was glad that he was able to uh make that play for us I was throwing it to Hazelwood actually I was throwing to Hazelwood on the corner route and uh he sunk back so I mean he just made a great defensive play and for me it just me being able to just read the defense and also, not to be too greedy in a two-minute situation, just be disciplined and stuff like this. So, I mean, it was a great play, a uh, great play for the defense, great play for Hudson. I mean, it's a learning experience for uh, the offense and me uh, personally. So. Hey, fellas.